Hello and welcome to Tai Chi Tuesday. And today we're going to be starting on the beginner's 10 form. And what we'll actually do is we'll start with a little warm up and just to relax into it. And we'll put together the follow along one and two that we've learned the last few weeks. And, um, and then we'll get into uh, number two, which should be mostly you know, footwork today. I'm going to start really getting into the footwork as I believe I promised last week. So I'll just do a little bit of a relaxation. So feet are shoulder or hip width apart, whatever you're comfortable with. You are suspending the head from the ceiling. Your shoulders are nice and relaxed and your forearms and hands, these are areas where people are really tense for a very long time, beginners right through to having done it for a couple of years. So just be really aware of those. And relaxing the belly and the back muscles and the bottom, allowing the muscles to just relax and hang down. Allow the knees to drop down and not be pulled up. The feet and toes should be nice and relaxed, nice and flat, not scrunched. And then again, just come back to the shoulders, relax the face muscles as well, the neck. And concentrate on taking some nice deep breaths into the belly. Mind of standing here, taking and concentrating on nice deep breaths. We're clearing the mind slightly and just trying to find our center of gravity by just pendulum swinging very slightly from side to side, forward and back. And if you're anything like me, you'll find that this exercise is quite useful because actually I stand quite a long way into my, put my weight forwards into my toes. So I quite like this exercise in Tai Chi of finding the centre because it's a lot further back than I'm used to being. Now I'll just do a bit of a breathing regulation, breathing in and out. Yeah, I'm just going to really slow those breaths down now, if you can. Breathing a nice deep breath into the belly. So this is the expanding, so your belly is expanding. Body and the contracting body contracts the belly contracts awesome and then we'll relax there and uh, let's do our follow along numbers one and two
there. And I remembered the rollback, so that was uh, made to change. So anyway, <laughs> let's get started on 10-4. So again, begins usual way, opening commencement. So opening with the left, shoulder or hip width apart, and then the commencement lifting to the shoulders, connect to the ceiling, nice deep breath in, sinking, rooting through the lower part of the body, through the floor, feet lower than the floor like tree roots, and breathing out, contracting. So this expanding and contracting of the body works all the way through all of the forms, as you're starting to realize, hopefully. And then the first movement or form in 10 form is reverse reeling arms. Reverse reeling arms, left hand goes in front, right hand to the side, to the ear, push a ball forward and the other hand comes in. This is both together at the same time usually. Palm up, hand goes out, and then swap the hands. When I teach 10 form, I usually teach it the other way around, which is why the follow alongs were so important because you've seen what to do with your hands. If you've missed any of those, go back because they are all on here. Look under the tab, Tai Chi Tuesday, or the playlist, Tai Chi Tuesday, and go right from video one. We would have the opening with the left, commencement. Then you'd have your first reverse reading arms. So the left hand would be in front, right hand would go to the side. You'd swap the hands, left hand would be at the chest. Remember that left hand isn't touching. And then you turn the right palm up and do the other side. Swap the hands, right hand ends up at the chest, but not touching. So you finish in this position with your left hand in front and your right hand at the chest. So you're going to do the same kind of sequence, so you'll end up now doing um, a brush knee push. The difference here is now you've got footwork, so we're going to do a bit of stepping today as well. We're going to learn how to do the footwork. So what I want you to do to begin with is, if you've got um, a room with laminate floors, tiles, anything like that, it's quite handy to use the lines or the squares to see how this works. To start with though, we're going to start um, with the feet shoulder width apart. And I just want you to bend into the knees a little bit, relax into the hips. And then in a straight line, really important to do this in a straight line and not how you would normally walk, so not like that. I would like you to step directly forward with your left foot. Heel then toe, move the way forward. I think in one of the early videos, we did do some Tai Chi walking somewhere. This is much the same. So we'll end up feet still shoulder width apart, even though you've done the step. 70% of weight on the front, 30 on the back. And this should feel nice and stable. Bring that foot back. Step out with the other one, remember to keep it in a straight line. Heel then toe, move the way forward, bend the knees. So the back one is still bent, but to a lesser extent. And again, should feel nice and stable. Both feet should still be rooted, don't lift that back heel up. Quite often we'll do a movement and, and back heels will come up. So just make sure that stays rooted through the floor and keeping you nice and stable. That's the easy bit. So now we need to add the turn into that because we're going to be turning. So 12 o'clock is this way, 3 o'clock is over there, and 9 o'clock is over there. And we're going to turn the first one towards 9 o'clock. So I've got a little line on this floor. I'm not sure how well that's going to come up on the camera, but there is a line there. And the idea is that I want to step way past that line, imagining that there's a square behind me so that I can push that foot back, not so much out that way, more back on the heel, 
My weight stays facing 12 o'clock for as long as possible. Put my toes down and then together, moving from the center, I'll move that weight across onto my left foot. And then I will lift the back heel and push it back so that my back foot, my right foot, points to the corner at 45 degrees. So I'm now straight on to nine o'clock. I've got 70% of weight on the front, 30 on the back. My feet are flat on the floor, rooted. And I've got a good posture with neutral spine. And if I draw my foot back in a straight line, you'll see that my feet are shoulder width apart. And if you can see that line on, on my floor, you'll see that my feet are now equally either side of that line. So if you've got laminar floor, work out how wide your um, shoulder width apart is. So if I was doing it here, gosh, they're not very easy to see, are they? Uh, if I was doing it here, I would probably miss one and a half or two boards, two lines. So it would mean that when I stood here, I'd put my heels on the back of my line. And then when I push my foot back, I would make sure that there was two full boards missed. Let me just move back so you can see that a bit better. So I've gone the line. I'm not sure you can see the lines, but I'll give you an idea. So I'll miss that board, I'll miss that board, and I'll step across to the next line on my heel. I'll put my toe down from the center, moving the weight across. But you can see that even once my weight has moved across, my hips are still facing the corner. My hips need to be facing that way and my knee and my toe are not in line. And so we lift the heel, push the heel back. It brings the hips around. It's a very subtle movement, but it brings the hips around. The back foot is now facing the corner or pointing to the corner. The hips are the same direction as your front toe. And you're nice and stable because you've got shoulder width apart, distance width. Pull my foot back, there you go, shoulder width apart. Okay, this can take quite a bit of practice and what you tend to find is you start off okay and then the more steps you do, they get shorter and shorter each time. Um, but yeah, so this takes a while. So we'll do the same thing, but now to uh, three o'clock. So, feet are together, my knees are bent because obviously I've done my commencement and everything. And I'm imagining my square and I'm going to step back or step diagonally across my square from corner to corner. Put my heel down first, then my toes. There's still no weight on there. Moving the weight from the center all the way over. Lift the back foot and push it back. Settle into that. 70% of weight on the back, on the front, sorry, 30 on the back. Now, what some people do is they'll do their step and they'll put the weight forward, turn the back foot, and then they'll move the weight back like this. It's quite, again, very subtle, everything's very subtle. As soon as you move the weight back, you don't have that 70% on the front and it's not quite as stable. Your spine probably won't be neutral and you won't have that line from the back of the foot to the top of the head. So just be aware that when you turn and you put that weight forward to turn the back foot and push it back, keep that weight forward in that position. Okay, so we're gonna add brush knee push to that. Um, so in my experience, if you've done the follow along forms, adding the brush knee push shouldn't be too difficult because you already know what the hands do. So we've, we've done the opening commencement. We've done reverse reading arms. So the left hand is in front, the right hand is at the chest. So you look like this. And you're gonna keep this left hand in front. Bring the right hand to the ear. Now at the same time that that hand comes out, move the weight across to the right foot. Then step diagonally across your square, still trying to face uh, 12 o'clock if you can. 
and then put the toes down, moving from the center, move the weight across. And because you're moving from the center, it automatically brings the shoulders around. I haven't moved my arms at all yet. My, my center is moving my arms. Now I lift my heel and push it back and that moves the arms a bit more. And all I've got to do is just push that right hand forwards a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, if you can get that step, move it across, heel, toe, move from the center, lift the back foot, push. You hardly have to do any movement with your actual arms. This is not an arm movement. This is a whole body. This is where you start to learn to use the whole body. It's a whole body movement, everything working as one. So you do your brush knee push to, this is very much a martial arts form in terms of everything that you do on one side is symmetrical. So you'll do the same on the other. So to be able to turn back to 12 with the stepping, you're moving from the center again. Keep that right hand in front. Keep the left hand there for now. You're going to move from the center back like you do in grasp the bird's tail. So you're moving from the center back to lift the front toe. And then you're turning that front toe, so the hands are still there, turning the front toe to 12, up to 12 and then the right foot comes in. But there's still no weight on that right foot. We're just squared up to 12 o'clock. Left hand comes to the ear. And you'll step out with that right foot on the heel, still facing 12, put the toes down, and then moving from the center, move the weight across, lift the back heel, push it back, root through the floor, and you end up with your second brush knee push. Okay, and that's as far as we're gonna to go today on the 10 form, because I really want you to practice the uh, stepping side I believe there is a separate rooted stepping video on the YouTube. If you go to the video tab and scroll down, um, I believe it's called rooted stepping. So if you've not managed to pick it up from this video, go and have a look at that because it sort of it does concentrate entirely just on doing those steps. So let's have a run through this 10 form that we've done so far. So we'll have feet together. I'm having problems with my wire today, sorry. So the string suspending from the ceiling. You're relaxing all of these muscles. And although, because we haven't done the commencement yet, you've still got a little bend on the knees because you are relaxed and you're allowing those kneecaps to drop down. The shoulders are relaxed. Take plenty of time on these opening commencement. This is your preparation. You're preparing your body, your mind. Opening. Center. Commencement. Connect and root. Reverse reading arms, right side first. Left hand goes in front. And the left side and the right palm goes up. Move the weight across. The right hand comes to the ear for brush knee push. Step across your square, heel first, then toe. Move the weight. Lift up the back heel and push. Move the weight back, lift the toes. Bring the left hand to the ear as you turn, keep the right hand in front. Step across with the right heel, then toe, move the weight. Lift the back heel, push it back, and then sell in. So there's a little bit of sink at the end of these movements as you root back through your back heel when you put it down. So the back heel comes down, you keep the weight forward, you turn the back heel, put it down, and there's a bit of a sink there just as you root downwards. Okay, so next week we'll add the next few bits on. Um, it is, uh, again, like I say, quite a quick form because we've done the follow-alongs. And 
that's what we're going to finish with again. Now we'll do a couple of follow-alongs. I'll give you a nice bit of practice today on those. And I will see you next week uh, for the next part of the 10th form.